Hi folks, and welcome back to The Shack. This is Joe N2DI, today with the Elecraft KX2. A few months ago, I did a video on the KX2 settings for hunting Pota and Soda with CW. It turns out that I missed a few important settings in that video that can probably help you. Plus, the audio and video quality in that video were terrible, so I want to redo it. Also, the sideband folks were saying, hey, what about us? So in this video, I'm going to cover both CW and sideband settings to maximize your KX2's abilities for hunting Pota and Soda. Remember, some of these settings work better under different conditions, so don't give up on trying one if you don't get immediate results. Think of these settings like tools in a toolbox. You have to pull the right one out for the task at hand. Just like last time, I'm going to break up this video into chapters so you can jump back to sections that you want to review, but I'll be covering the settings in an order, so watch them from start to finish the first time, so you have context for each setting. Also remember, if I say short press, that means you just press and release a button immediately. If I say long press, that means you press and hold it for about a second and a half or maybe two seconds. Also at the start of each section, I'm going to let you know if the settings apply to CW sideband or both. Okay, does that sound good? Then let's get started. Okay, this first setting we're going to talk about is audio effects. It's something that I forgot to cover in the last video. And it applies to both CW and sideband. You need to be using stereo headphones or dual external speakers for this to work. You won't notice a difference if you're just using the internal speaker, and you're probably not going to hear the difference on the video either. We'll turn up the volume a little bit, but it won't make a difference. It's important not to confuse audio effects with dual watch. Dual watch allows you to listen to both VFO A and B frequencies at the same time. Audio effects is something much different. The manual says, at present the KX2 provides one audio effect mode delay, which creates an illusion of acoustic space, resulting in less fatiguing sound and in some cases better copy of weak signals. I actually tend to agree with this. So to enable this, the menu setting that you're going to want is menu AFX MD. You're going to want to switch this from off to delay. That's the only setting. Now wear stereo headphones when you do this and you'll hear the difference. I always leave the setting on. The next setting I'm going to talk about is the preamp and attenuator. The preamp is one of the things I reach for first when I'm trying to boost a weak signal. It's important to know that once you turn on the preamp, it will amplify both the incoming signal as well as the noise level. So that may make it easier or harder to hear the signal. So try it. The preamp and attenuator both apply to CW and sideband. On the KX2, it's generally useful from 20 meters up to 10 meters, but you can use it anywhere. Also, if you have a loud signal that comes in and blows out your eardrums, you can enable the attenuator. The attenuator will cut down the power of incoming signals as well as the noise. The preamp and the attenuator are controlled by the same button. Short press the pre button repeatedly to switch from preamp on and attenuator off to both off to attenuator on only. Just keep pressing the pre button until you get to the setting you want. That's the attenuator and you can see ATT here and that's the preamp. You can see pre there as well. Notice how the signal was boosted. And it's back to the preamp off. Next, we're going to talk about the filter passband or bandwidth control and the passband shift. This setting applies to both CW and sideband. It's a setting that I constantly tend to adjust under different circumstances. You tap the fill button and rotate the AF slash mon knob to adjust the bandwidth of the filter. And here you can see a graphic of it widening or getting narrower. To set the filter bandwidth back to its default setting, just press the AF mon knob in. The default width for the pass band is 400 hertz wide for CW and 2700 hertz wide for SSB. Generally, the tighter or narrower you set the filter, the more you will be increasing the signal to noise ratio. Sometimes when you tighten up your filter bandwidth, weak stations will appear out of the noise. You can also use it to suppress nearby stations, aka QRM, that are making it difficult to hear the station you're trying to dig out. 
It will not help if the QRM is very close to or on top of the same frequency as the station you're trying to work. You can also shift your passband left or right, meaning lower or higher in frequency, without adjusting your VFO knob to move away from adjacent noise. Press the fill button and rotate the Kira speed knob to shift your passband higher or lower. If you want to center it again, you could just press that knob in. The next setting we're going to talk about is CW pitch, and that's obviously a CW only setting. The CW pitch is not something you think of changing at first, but it can make a pretty big difference when pulling out weak signals. It also helps reduce fatigue when you're listening for a very long time. Most transceivers come with a factory CW pitch set between 600 and 800 hertz. I've been experimenting with settings below 600, between 500 and 600 hertz on different transceivers, and I noticed it actually made a really big difference for me. To change your CW pitch, the menu setting is pitch, surprisingly. Now to change this, you're going to want to rotate your VFO knob, and it'll change in frequency steps of 10 hertz. It'll also emit a tone at that frequency. So I'm going to leave mine there at 550 hertz. And you can hear a difference in the background noise as well. Now the next setting you're going to want to touch after doing that is your center frequency. And again, this is a CW only setting. You're going to want to center your passband around your CW pitch so it's not skewed to one side or the other. To change this, just tap the fill button and then press in the key or speed knob and it will automatically center it to your CW pitch. The next setting I'm going to cover is the audio peak filter. The audio peak filter is another CW only setting. This is another one of the settings that I reach for quite often because it really helps dig out weak signals. To enable it, long press the APF-AN button underneath filter right here. You'll notice this graphic once it's enabled. What it does is it turns on a very narrow filter that peaks the audio in the very center of the passband. But this setting doesn't help unless you line up that very tight filter exactly on the frequency of the signal you're trying to dig out. So you may have noticed once I enabled it, an extra digit appeared on the VFO. That allows very fine tuning to line your signals up. It really helps when the signal's right at the noise floor. To disable it, long press the fill button. Okay, so I've tuned around to find the station so you can hear what the audio peak filter sounds like when you use it. Hear how the station's popping out now? Okay, so that's using your audio peak filter. Okay, in this section, we're going to talk about the automatic gain control and RF gain. This is another method for digging out weak signals, and it can be accomplished with a combination of these two settings. It works for both CW and sideband. The first thing you're going to want to do is turn off your automatic gain control. And you can find that in the menu under AGCMD. Right now it's switched on. We're going to turn that off. Then you're going to want to find your RF gain. Now what you're going to want to do is decrease your RF gain while turning up your volume at the same time. Now I'm going to find the station that we can test this on. Okay, I found the station that we could try this out on. This helps to decrease the background noise and pop the signal out. Sometimes weak signals will pop out like magic when you do this.
Okay, so that's your AGC and your RF gain control. The next setting we're going to talk about is Receive Audio Equalization. This applies both to CW and sideband. The KX2 lets you access eight bands of Receive Audio Equalization via the RxEQ menu. Now what you see here is eight individual vertical bar graphs. Each one of them centers around different frequencies. All the way to the left it starts at 50 Hz. Going to right, then the next one is 100 Hz, 200, 400, 800, 1600, 2400, and 3200. To change one of these, you tap the corresponding number on the keypad. Now remember, the KX2 has a built-in keypad. You see each knob and button has a number that's associated with it. So for instance, if you want to change the second column, press number one. Now that column is blinking and you could rotate the VFO knob to either boost or cut that frequency band by a total of 16 dB. It's also important to know that as you adjust each one of these frequency bands, if you're adjusting something that's outside of your pass band, you're not gonna hear a difference. So for instance, if your CW pitch is set to 600 Hertz and your pass band bandwidth is 400 Hertz wide, then changing settings like the 400 and 800 Hertz EQ bands will make a difference. Whereas if you touch something like 3200 Hertz, you're not gonna hear that obviously. Now, if you wanna set all these settings back to their neutral state of zero dB, press and hold the VFOB knob to reset them. Also, it's important to look up here and you see this is the EQ for CW. You can switch the mode to sideband those are two separate groups of settings you can save. Now the same applies for sideband as well. So depending on the bandwidth of your passband, if you're touching one of the EQ bars like let's say 50 hertz, you're probably not going to hear that. I initially thought the setting really wasn't going to help much, but it really does. Just try it, believe me. You'll be amazed. Next we're going to talk about XIT or Transmit Incremental Tuning. This pertains to CW, so you sideband folks can take a nap. Experienced CW ops probably already know what this is and why you need it, but I'm going to give some context for newer CW ops. So if you're an experienced CW op, just bear with me while I explain this. Hoda and Soda stations are usually on the receiving end of a pileup. When everyone calls on the same frequency, the Poda or Soda station will hear one long continuous tone and it kind of sounds like a single strong station is just keying down with a straight key. That's because all those incoming calls are merging together. When that happens, the POTA or SOTA station has to pick out parts of a call either at the beginning of the pileup or at the end, because everything in the middle, again, just sounds like that one long tone. Now, experienced operators will dial their VFO slightly off frequency. When you do that and call during a pileup, you won't be colliding with all those other stations on the exact frequency that the POTA station is on. So you'll be completely audible with a different sounding pitch so the POTA or SOTA station will be able to pick you out. Now the reason why you would need XIT or transmit incremental tuning is if the POTA or SOTA station that you're working is very weak and you have a narrow filter set or something like your audio peak filter set, then you can't touch the VFO knob because they'll disappear. They'll be outside of your passband bandwidth or out from under your audio peak filter. So what you need to do is somehow leave your VFO on frequency, but still transmit slightly off frequency. Now you could do this two ways. You can do this operating split or with XIT. XIT lets you set your transmit frequency slightly off from what the VFO is set to. So hopefully that makes sense and why you'd want to use it. Okay, to enable it, go into your menu and find XIT. Once you're there, rotate your VFO A knob to switch it on, and you'll see XIT on the display over here. Now let's back out of the menu, and when you rotate your VFO B knob, you'll be adjusting your transmit frequency. And you can dial this above or below the POTA station's frequency or SOTA station. As long as you're off, you'll be heard. 
In this section, we're going to talk about noise reduction. Noise reduction applies to both sideband and CW, and I completely forgot about it in the older video because I never use it, honestly. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't try it. It may work for you under the conditions that you're encountering. Noise reduction removes random background noise, that static hiss that you hear. Higher settings may attenuate weaker signals, though. To enable it, hold down the pre button, which is also labeled NR. And then you can turn the volume knob to adjust the setting. It goes up to 10. Usually on settings lower than 3, or maybe up to 3, usually work pretty well. Anything higher than that really kind of kills the signal. But again, try it, right? It might work for you. And to turn it off, you just press and hold the button again, and it turns it off. The next setting we're going to talk about is noise blanking, and that applies to both CW and sideband. Noise blanking is used to eliminate repetitive electrical noise that comes from things like power lines or appliances or your vehicle ignition or electric fences, stuff like that. That noise usually sounds like a rhythmic tick or a surging sound. It's not going to help with background static, so don't turn it on unless you have some kind of electrical noise. And when you do turn it on, adjust it to use the lowest effective setting. To switch the noise blanker on, hold in the volume knob, and then rotate it to adjust it. Tap any key to exit, and if you want to turn it off, press and hold the volume knob again. That's your noise blanker. Okay, the last setting we're going to talk about today is the programmable function switches. The shortcut keys. You basically have four buttons that you could program to reach any menu option without having to dig through the menu. It comes in handy with the settings that we discussed so far. To program one of these shortcut buttons, go into the menu option that you want to assign to one of the four buttons, and the four buttons are one through four here. Find the menu option. In this case, I'm going to assign XIT to a button. Then you're going to want to long press the PFN button, which is also the ATU button. Long press it, and now it's asking you which button you want to assign that function to. I'm going to press 1. PF1 is set. Now that means when you press that function button, it's either going to switch on or off the XIT. It's going to toggle it. So let's get out of the menu. Now to use it, long press the PFN button again. And now press the function button that you want to use. And you can see it just switched the XIT on. Now we could do it again. And it turned the XIT off. So that's a quick way to get to your settings without having to dig through the menu. Now you can set those buttons to things like XIT to turn off your automatic gain control and maybe your RF gain. Whatever works for you. Okay, so that's how you use your programmable function buttons. Okay, folks, so that's it for today. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please like and subscribe so other hams can find my content. So from the shack of Joe, November 2, Delta, India, I wish you all good health in 73. Bye-bye.